One, two, three. We want to welcome everybody to Mom and Dad Talk. We're favorite two people are Mom and Dad, but this is our special rendition. We love talking about this man. Everything Deion Sanders. Uh, he's a Christian. And, uh, you know, this year, I'm, I know we're both rooting for him. And, and, and I think what a lot of people don't understand is, is it's very hard to win a game in Division One especially starting a program, especially you may win one extra game or may lose one. However, it's hard to win. And, 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 and Carlin, um, what do you think about this year for Deion Sanders? What are your thoughts? Uh, well, I think it's going to be better than last. Well, let me take this back. I think they're going to have more wins this year than last year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a certain group of people in, the, in America that make money off of football games, and I don't know how they do it, but somehow they're more right than they're wrong, and that's Vegas. Yes, and and Vegas predicted three three and a half wins last year, and they got four. Mm -hmm. And this year they predicted five and a half wins for Colorado, so that probably means six. Mm -hmm. I'm giving them seven because mm -hmm. I do. Th I think there are some things that they are outstanding on, while still being deficient in a, n a number of other areas. So, and when you wave that out, that's usually worth a win. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I'm 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 going with Vegas plus one, and by that I don't mean betting. I'm talking just about the odds. <laughs> yeah. And so I think that I think they're gonna I think they're gonna um, you know they were competitive last season, and that's that's the thing that's troubling to me is when people start uh, are really really critical of last year. Mm -hmm. Oh, four and eight, four and eight, four and eight, but they don't delve into the how and why. Like mm -hmm. they were the the program was one and eleven. They weren't just one and eleven before he got there. They were losing by thirty points a game, twenty nine point five points a game. On top of that, mm -hmm. the next worst team was fourteen points better, which means they were losing by two scores mm -hmm. worse than the second worst team in America. They were the worst program in America. Dion comes in. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's let's remind everybody: it, it was like over a decade they were so bad. Yeah. It, it yeah, wasn't yeah. like it was just you know a yeah, yeah they, 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 right it wasn't it didn't just happen overnight but they were they, they were they were they were bad the, so he comes into a situation mm -hmm. where they're not just bad they're not even close to being competitive mm -hmm. they have no five star recruits in the state of Colorado so it wasn't like he was coming to a place mm -hmm. where it was just abundant high school talent that he could attract like Mississippi or Florida or Texas mm -hmm. or you know what I mean Virginia mm -hmm. whatever he did it was this Colorado and so he came in with that had a place that had nothing, a bunch of bad habits, a mm -hmm. bunch of losing. And he had to do it against a schedule that had six ranked teams on it, including four first round quarter or four, uh, four NFL quarterbacks, Bo Nix, Caleb Williams, uh, Cam Ward. D I mean, you know, a lot DJ of them made the NFL, them. by the way, you know, just, just, just for everybody's understanding, you, do, you don't become a first round pick and you're yeah. playing against those guys. You know, so, so, so their yeah. schedule was stacked. Their schedule was stacked the last year of the Pac-12. Their schedule was stacked, mm -hmm. right? They they were coming off of, of a, a historically bad season, right? He generationally bad. Let me. I'm just generationally bad, right? And so anything you do that's better than that. So the so so they come in and they get off to this hot start, and some people got caught up in the Dion's confidence, and he was saying that Dion never said that he was gonna. He never. And, and here's a crazy thing. Mm -hmm. He never said how many games that he thought they would win. He never talked about, oh, yep. we're going to win five, six, seven, eight. We're going to we're going to be in the college championship. He never said that last year. Mm -hmm. He just said we want to go out, we want to dominate, we want to do what we you know do what we do. But the way he said it with such confidence and such you know mm -hmm. such vigor, people oh he's talking trash. He's talking trash. He's like but, no, but no. He was uh, he he's uh, shiny. He's shiny. He's sparkly. He's loud. And he said this. He said better get me while you can. They're very good because because he knew what was coming, right? Yeah. So anyway, all of that has to do with the fact of this year, which is they were the games they only got blown out in two games, and one of those games Shadur didn't play. And, and let's uh, let's tell everybody and, this too. Hunter Travis Hunter, who's his best defensive player, was, was out three out. games with a dirty hit. Yeah, with a with a clear dirty hit, and the dude. And think and about hold on time. We have to be yeah. careful about this because because haters will say. Oh, it's football. That happens all the time. Okay, so then let's not call it dirty. Let's call it illegal because the ref threw a flag. Yes. So at the very least, it was an illegal hit that the referees agreed should never have happened. All right, <laughs> so we can stop the conversation right there. Like, if you don't agree that it was dirty, 
fine. It was illegal. And it would cause it was a 15 yard penalty, which is the worst. Well, other than an ejection, that's the stiffest penalty you can get. Yeah. Okay, so fine. But I want to go back to this point differential. Yeah. Because they were losing by 30 points a game. Dion comes in and reduces it to 6.4. That's less than a score. So he they reduced it from 30 to 6.4. So that means the other the two games that got blown out of the other six games that they lost, they were in it. Mm-hmm. Including to USC. Yeah. Right? Okay. And the one game that they, one of the games that got blown out, Shadur was out with a fractured back. He mm-hmm. didn't even play. Okay. And, you know, so, so here's the point. This year, they do have, they have 42 new players mm-hmm. in full transparency. One of them is our, what we call our nephew, BJ Green, defensive edge, yeah. edge line. Shout out to the Green family. Shout out to the Green family. Um, transfer from Arizona. Actually, and again, I love to address haters this way. Mm-hmm. They go, "Oh, BJ Green, he came from he came from Arizona State trash program." Well, first of all, he was one of the leaders in sacks in the Pac-12. Right now, he's projected to be a third round pick in the NFL. He was number three in the nation, no, or number one in the nation in quarterback pressures. So you don't always have to produce the sack in order. To, so you can't be trash. And here's the thing: mm-hmm. Washington recruited him out of the transfer portal two weeks before they played Michigan in the national championship. So you have a national championship level team that wanted him to start for them next year. I'm glad Can't BJ did not go to Washington. Well, he committed. He committed. And then when DeBoers went to Alabama, NCAA let him out of his commitment. Mm-hmm. That's how he got I, I, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm glad he didn't because I would hate to see him playing against our favorite team. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, so anyway. So, All so hell, Jim Harbaugh. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, we got ours. We got Michigan, we got ours. So this year, I look at them and I go, 42 new players. The talent level has come up tremendously mm-hmm. in, every, in, every, in, every, in every position. You, you've got a senior quarterback who some people are, uh, it may even be the best quarterback in America. Travis Hunter is arguably the best player in America. And why this is not a surprise is Travis Hunter was ranked the number one football player in America out of high school. Yeah. So why are we surprised? You know what I'm saying? He's making. Nick, he's Nick Saban making was even good. upset. <laughs> Nick Saban was even upset. Like, man, talking about a team that's in Mississippi, uh, you know, HBCU, and, and shout out to HBCUs. I, it's a shame that the NFL does not recognize um, that league and the type of players they continue to put out and have to well, give it to speaking, Al Davis. You know, Al Davis went to HBCUs to pick black players, and when they got better. Speed. Yeah, everybody started to go in there and risk raid HBCUs, and 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 I'm glad everybody's more diverse in this country. That everybody doesn't want to be diverse for some reason and think it's kind of crazy. But yeah, keep on going, Carlin. So just real quick, a side note: speaking of Saban and HBCUs, uh, two days ago I think it was, mm-hmm. he was on an interview and he said, "Shout out to Deion Sanders for elevating HBCUs. They just got a TV deal." And he said and that TV deal is going to help them with recruiting. It's going to help them get better facilities and things like that. And he said that wouldn't have happened had Dion never gone to Jackson State. That's what, this is what Nick Saban just said mm-hmm. a couple of days ago. So anyway, all right. So <laughs> back, back to mm-hmm. this this season. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think that there are se- I think there are seven win team on on paper. Mm-hmm. They've got to get out of Nebraska with a win. I mean, you don't have to, but. If they get out of Nebraska, they're going to go four and zero in the beginning. This, my, this wife, my wife is going to hate that, by the way, Carlin. Well, Nebraska, that's going to be it's going to be tough because Nebraska is way better than they were last year. They put up forty points this weekend, and their five star quarterback Dylan Royal is a freshman. He's he threw for two thirty two in the first half, and they sat him down. So he looks like to be the real deal. Colorado's going to be in for a dog fight. It's on the road, but Colorado's still the more talented team overall, right? So if it gets a close one, Nebraska might get them because it's at home. Mm-hmm. Either way, if they go into that fourth week three and one, they got a shot at at seven. Mm-hmm. If they come out of this uh, uh, Nebraska with a win, they could be four and zero by you know that thir- first quarter of the season. In which case, they still got Cincinnati and Baylor, which are not good teams at all. Mm-hmm. So now you're looking at could they get to nine? And this is what I want to introduce to you, Todd. Okay. Last year, the top twelve teams, when you got down to the like fifteen, there were there was a there was two nine and three teams there. Now with the 12 team college football championship expanded to 12 teams. No. The writers still vote. The AP still votes on who gets in. It's just yeah. 12 teams now. Correct. See, they were voting on last year of the four. And, and by the way, I've always said that they got it, they always get it right. No, nope. mm-hmm. uh, it's an unpopular opinion. Mm-hmm. So, side note, 
Do you think they got it right by not letting Florida State in last year? No. Uh, now it's being proven. Now it's being proven. They're 0-2 after last night. I know this is about Colorado. They're 0-2 last night after last night. Well, Kyle, you bring up a great point because you, you brought up Florida State, which was somebody's alumni. Well, okay, we'll get there. We'll get there because I know I know where you're going. Yeah, I, know yeah, you're going. Yeah, so yeah, I don't want to yeah, do it out yeah. of order. I don't yeah. want to do it out of order. Okay, so okay. so let me say this. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll get to my point quickly. So here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Deion Sanders went on national TV, I don't know, months ago, mm-hmm. or after he saw spring practice, and he said, we're going to play for a national co- uh, championship this year. Mm-hmm. And I was like, he's crazy. There, there's there, there's no way. They might be a seven-win team. They, mm-hmm. At best, maybe they're an eight-win team. Mm-hmm. But what Dion is looking at that I did not look at until this week mm-hmm. is their path. How do you get there? Mm-hmm. He didn't say there'd be a 10-win team. He didn't say it'd be an mm-hmm. 11- or 12-win team. Mm-hmm. But if they get to nine wins, right, first of all, if they win the Big 12, they're in. Oh, yeah. But they're, they're probably not going to win the Big 12. I mean, Kansas State, Kansas, they're tough. You know, uh, Texas, I mean, not Texas State, mm-hmm. uh, Oklahoma State, they're yeah. all ranked we're pretty high right mm-hmm. now. They'll have to fall flat on their face in order for it to happen. But if he gets to 9-3 and three somehow, and mm-hmm. all he needs is one upset to do it, mm-hmm. if he gets to 9-3, to, to and three, the, the AP still has to vote. So what would you rather have, an 11-0 and 0 Liberty team that hasn't played anybody this year? Mm-hmm. Or a nine and three Colorado team with Coach Prime getting five point six million viewers on a Thursday night. Ooh. Who are you going to vote in? You're yeah. going to vote in the team that travels well, the team that that brings in more TV numbers. They can get into the top twelve mm-hmm. of the college football uh, playoffs at nine and three. That's the mm-hmm. mark. Mm-hmm. That's the mark. And if it gets in, can you imagine how insane that is? That first round game, go mm-hmm. oh, be on in, in a bowl game. And all bets are off at that point because once you're in the yeah, playoffs, you know what I'm yeah. saying. It's a matter of just performing every week and who you play against your opponent, and and it's like, yeah. especially in college, it's about who you play against because yeah. a lot of these guys are schemes and stuff. A lot of times you haven't seen that before. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and like I said, you know, and I'm not saying that. And, and and for the haters that will put things in comments, mm-hmm. I'm not saying. I want to be very clear. I'm not saying they will do it. Mm-hmm. I'm saying I can see a path that everything lines up for them. If now yeah. they could actually go four and eight again, shoot, they could go three. They could go three and nine. Anything can happen. If Junior gets hurt, if Travis gets hurt, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. If something happens, it, mm-hmm. it could all go. But I'm just saying, all things being equal, this is a six seven win team who, if they overperform, mm-hmm. could be easy, could be a nine win team. And at nine, mm-hmm. all bets are off. At nine, you could get into the twelve team college play. Then he looks like a prophet. Well, and also too, the Big Twelve hasn't been known for their awesome defenses. Oh, and that's the thing, and it, it, that's and and this is where some people get confused. They're like, "Well, as we first of all, the Big Twelve is not a weak conference. They've right. got five ranked teams in there. That, mm-hmm. but the point you bring up, Todd, is extremely important. They don't play any defense in the. You didn't think the Pac twelve played any defense? Big Twelve don't play. They certainly don't play any defense. They're not known for their cornerbacks or linebackers. Mm-hmm. You know, they they do have some defensive mm-hmm. linemen. Mm-hmm. But if it's a track meet, if it's a track meet, mm-hmm. and you got Shador throwing the ball and a little bit of time from that new offensive line, you know what else? Um, you know, you you know what else they, that that mm-hmm. they have. I believe, and mm-hmm. I am going on record saying this. I believe they have the deepest wide receiver uh, core in America. Well, I believe they got six. I believe they got six guys that will play in the NFL one day. Well, when you have a weak line like that, and, and this is be also, I think they have a really good backup quarterback this time. Yeah, sure. yeah. Ryan Stop. Ryan Stop is good. And so you know when he, you know if Shadur gets hurt or whatever the situation is, I you know it's not like they're really really hurt and you have a serious drop off like you kind of had last year. And it, it wasn't really a drop off last year. It was just no. The kid, the kid came in against um, Utah. I guess the whatever last game was, he threw for decent amount of yards, some touchdowns, no picks. You mm-hmm. know, and they only lost. They only lost by six or whatever it was, yeah. four, whatever it was. He's a, he's a, he's a, listen. They've they've gotten they've solved their problem with depth. They still need a little bit more depth mm-hmm. at linebacker. They don't have they don't really have the greatest linebacker. But you know who they do have at linebacker it was crazy. I know I'm all over the board. It mm-hmm. was crazy. They have Gage Goldberg. You ever heard of the last name Goldberg? No, the wrestler. Bill Goldberg. What? It's his son. Yes, he's a wow. freshman in Colorado. He he wanted to go play for Dion because him and Dion the, Goldberg and Dion were teammates for the Atlanta Falcons. Makes sense. 
So yeah. they got Gabe Goldberg. So he's not a red shirt, but he's not playing much. But when he does play, I I can't wait to see. Goldberg's already been to the game, so. Well, you know, it would, let's you know, let's just look at the elephant in the room because we're going to kind of transfer on to this. Is that what bothers me most, and and one of the reasons why we like Deion Sanders is because he's an advocate for being a Christian and Christian values. And you know, in this in this environment where people say they're Christian, they're just Christian in name only, not in action. And what I've admired about Dion, he's never talked about anybody. He's always praised his opponent and just says, hey, we're going to play. And let's just talk about the elephant in the room. Um, people who, if you call yourself whatever, not like, I, I can take it. And we talked about this, Carlin, if you don't like his his flamboyance, but, but be consistent in your flamboyance, even with the people who you elect. Be, okay, I just want to point that out there. I'm not trying to be political. I'm just making a point. Just be consistent in your values because if you vote for somebody that's that arrogant and and does that kind of stuff, there's something wrong with your values. And the elephant in the room is you might be a little biased. Just saying. Well, hypocr hypocritical is the word. Okay, I'm gonna go yeah. ahead and say it. As a, if you say, if if you if you're like you know you don't have to like Dion, right? right. If, if you know, he he is flashy. He is loud. He mm -hmm. is brand. He is a brand manager, yeah. right? He created this whole primetime thing in his dorm room in Florida State. I mean, he's done several interviews. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not breaking any news. This real the real prime is fishing with a cane pole, you know, outside the river. Country prime, right? Yeah. That's that, that's the real that's the real Deion Sanders. But he mm -hmm. knew how to make money. He knew that, like your boy Dr. Dre said, no such thing as bad publicity, right? He knows how to spend. I mean, he, he's so smart and intelligent, and and people want to say criticize him so much. And let's just be realistic, and and this is something. And like I said, we're gonna we're gonna switch it just a tad bit, everybody. So just, you ain't ready for this one. But he won at every level. He won in high school. He won at the lower level, uh, college level. He's as winning, yeah, as a head coach, and he's yeah. winning, and he won in Pee Wee. He did all the stuff, and I'm just making a point. And and he never got a pos opportunity for a position coach in the NFL after all those wins. Todd, well, here's the thing. Let's put let's put a statistic with the fact okay. that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Deion, everywhere Deion Sanders has either been a coordinator or a head coach, the team has improved wins over the last previous season. That includes going four and eight last year. They improved their winning percentage by four hundred percent last year, and still were only four and eight. And 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 I love Coach Harbaugh. We are Coach Harbaugh fans. Coach Harbaugh, I would love to meet you one day and shake your hand. I mean, please, you got to know I, I'm a I'm a Harbaugh junkie. But Coach Harbaugh had to admit what Deion Sanders did in one year is very very hard to do with a horrible. I mean, when you know, at least when Harbaugh got Michigan, it was bad, but it wasn't that bad. Oh no. We still had four and five star recruits that were on the team, and yes, he brought his own. He brought his Louis luggage, so he had a he had you know, three or you know, two or three or whatever. But what Shadur Sanders did last year, while being the most sacked quarterback in America, yeah. is insane. Yeah. Fifty two sacks, but he still threw for thirty two hundred yards, twenty seven touchdowns, and three interceptions. He almost never fumbled ball, which means he didn't turn the ball over. When he threw, he threw it for accuracy. He threw it for more yards, and he threw it for touchdowns. And he did this all while running for his life. It's, the, which, which you can just, hate on it. You can hate him all, all you want, but the numbers don't lie. And, and and I bring up this other thing too. And 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 I advocate for diversity. I'm a big diversity fan. Um, and I love the fact that the NFL has ladies playing, in, you know, they're coaching in position coaches in the NFL. My question is, what, what's the criteria to be a coach in the NFL? Because Dion hit all those marks and went beyond that. I'll tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. And there are there are coaches of color who have benefited from this. I don't think anymore that it's a race thing. Mm -hmm. I do think that it is a, how do I say this? And it's it's about the coaching tree. Who did you coach under? So the Belichick coaching tree, mm -hmm. the 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 you know the the Pete Carroll trail coaching tree, mm -hmm. the Andy Reid coaching tree. Mm -hmm. There's about four or five coaches, longtime coaches in the NFL, whose assistants and coordinators have become head coaches, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so Dion was never looked at as somebody that one of those coaches could groom. Even though he had good relationships with all his coaches, 
those but, coaches are now retired and been retired. He did not come up in a system where they would where they would give him access to you know to to the coaching but, tree. But that's the He's genius of, of Deion Sanders. Tree. He made his own mark when there wasn't anything there. That's the genius of Deion. And, and to me, I want that dude coaching talent on my team because, like I said, he did a miracle uh, with the Colorado stuff. You know, he turned yeah. around a program in JSU. Well, you know what I'm saying? That That's hard to do. Yeah. And you recruit it's, it's, on top of but, that. But I, th I think the cat's out of the bag, though, Todd. And then you, you started talking about this earlier in here, and I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there. Let's go. I mean, they're openly totally – people like Mike Greenberg, even Paul Feinbaum, who 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 does not like Dion, right, have all thrown out within the last week that there are three scenarios where Dion may not stay at Colorado. Mm -hmm. All right, one is a conspiracy theory to the nth degree, but there is, but it is not impossible mm -hmm. that Dion could be the next head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Dion has said he's not going to the NFL, but he never said this. He never said he would never coach his son again. And if Jerry Jones finds a way to draft Sajor this mm -hmm. coming draft somehow mm -hmm. because don't you find it funny they haven't signed Dak? They haven't signed Dak to an extension? Like, why is it taking so long? He's going to make $600 million mm -hmm. from somebody somewhere. Mm -hmm. He might mm -hmm. even go to a rival. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like New York, the the Giants or somebody, yeah. right? And they still haven't signed. Why? Because they could, if they can get Shadour, they can get him on a rookie contract. Mm -hmm. You know who's coming behind him? Dad. Damn. Okay. That's and Travis Hunter, maybe. Theory. Well, they I don't I mean Travis is gonna go at this point, he doesn't have to do another thing. He's gonna go in the top five. Dallas doesn't have a top five pick. They're not mm -hmm. gonna have a top five pick. However, they could get Shador at 15 if, if Shador drops that far. Or they could package picks together. They have a bunch of picks. Mm -hmm. They can package picks together to get they're gonna they can get one or the other, but they can't get both. Okay. And my guess is that because they've already signed some other defensive mm -hmm. pieces, or they're gonna sign Parsons and whatever. Anyway, I don't think Hunter's on their list. However, mm -hmm. quarterback is. And if you don't think a quarterback makes all the difference in the world, I'm about to – this is where I'm going next where Dion could go. Okay. Look at Florida State being 0-2 with DJ Ungulaya, who was at Clemson, mm -hmm. who was at Oregon State. He beat Colorado last year, right? Yep. Barely, yep. right? Yep. And then somehow he's transferred to his third school at Florida State. Last night he, he overthrew guys. He underthrew guys. He mm -hmm. didn't use his legs. Mm -hmm. And Jordan Travis last year was the reason why Florida State was the fourth best team in the country. Yes. When he got hurt, they didn't score another touchdown for the rest of the year. Imagine that. They didn't score another passing touchdown against Florida with the 67th ranked team defense in America last mm -hmm. year, against Louisville, mm -hmm. and, and then they got trounced by Georgia in the bowl game. Yeah, They never scored. So here comes DJU, mm -hmm. and they're 0-2, Georgia mm -hmm. Tech and Boston College. So now, guess what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Norvell looks like he's on the, and I think he's a good coach. I just don't, I just don't think they have the right scheme down there. They got to get a, a dynamic quarterback. Guess who they could bring to town? Of course, the, the outside. He owns Florida. He yeah. owns he owns the state of Florida. You it's imagine when he could recruit? No, Florida would be on yeah. lockdown. The whole South, you can just forget it. And, and, I mean, basically at this point, it's just it's just international. Deion Sanders. Yeah, they'd have to do some re relationship repair because Danny Cannell is one of their announcers, and he talked really bad about Deion, and they no, talked bad about I, him. I, I, I say he be didn't gone. graduate from there. It, yeah, it's, it's well, like, trust me, they, they would clear house for Deion if that if they knew they could get him. Here's the I, other one: mm -hmm. Florida. Florida. Florida's a dumpster fire right now. Oh, I mean, I just you know Napier Nap Napier is on life support. For the next two weeks, I mean, they if they don't get a win, it's it's over. He could be a, he could be out by mid season, right? And so, they, so you have two teams, two major programs mm -hmm. in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. One of which is a place where Dion played. Mm -hmm. If Dion gets to seven wins, heck, if he gets to six wins and is bowl eligible and goes to a bowl, they'd be stupid. I, not I, to try. I find it hard for them to not open up the the, the vault and say, "Hey, Dion, here's eighty million. Come and save us." Well, you know, or you can be like Dabo Sweeney and be like, I'm, I just don't care. I'm going to get stuck in the mud. I mean, you know, let, let, you know, that's a whole nother subject for another time. You know, I, mean, I don't even want to. I, I, I wouldn't waste time talking about Dabo. Yeah, I mean, you know, because Nick Saban's gone. So, so the only other person that could change your program around is Deion Sanders. With he knows how to do it with proof, right? 
I mean, Jim Harbaugh is the other say, one. I, but I, wouldn't he, say that. I, I wouldn't say he's the only one in college that knows how to do. There's two or three other names. Lane Kiffin is one, but do you really want what? so? Lane you, Kiffin. You, you, Lane Kiffin's just learning how to get a winning team. I think he lucked up. That's just me personally. Because I mean, everywhere he went was a dumpster fire. I think he learned how. But to... I think that's all the extracurriculars about him. I do think the man can coach, and I do yes. think he can recruit. Yes, definitely can do those two things. I mean, he, you know, the program he's with now. But I mean, USC. Remember, he was at USC. That didn't turn out so hot. <laughs> Dion has not had a losing performance in any place he's he's actually coached at. That that that's that. And what I mean by that is, he's got more. He's added more wins than losses when he got there. Right. Right. And, and like I said, the only other person I would even closely even even compare somewhat to is Jim Harbaugh. That's my dude, right? I mean, that's a lot of programs to get buried from the dead. And Jim Harbaugh's done the best out of anybody I've seen. <laughs> I hope he went to yeah, Super Bowl. Yeah, I'd put James point. Franklin on that list with Penn State. I'd put him because what he did at Vanderbilt, yes, was, yes. you know, it, it was. It, I mean, I live here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. you can't, I mean. You know, there are certain positions where you and I could play for Vanderbilt, really. I mean, just, you know, but, but you know, they are an SEC team, and they, they've traditionally been stout on defense, but James Franklin did miracles there. Penn State, he's kind of on a short leash now because he's got so much talent there. They're like, when are you going to get over the hump against Ohio State and Michigan? But he's the kind of charismatic but Ohio State and Michigan, let's just, just, just be real. Ohio I State and Michigan. But it's Penn State. It's Penn State. I understand, but if you're going against Ohio State. You got to beat both those guys in a year. Nah, just one. You just got to beat just one. This has got to be the year because Michigan is down. And by Michigan being down, I mean they're number 10. <laughs> right? We're rooting for our man so, more. And more we yeah, trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Penn State's ranked ahead of them. So, mm -hmm. they, they, you know, they got to make good at some point in time. However, that doesn't mean James Franklin is one of those type of coaches that could come into Florida State or Florida. Mm -hmm. And really just light things up. Lane Kiffin's another if, one, but he's not leaving Ole Miss, I don't think. You know, I, I wouldn't leave Ole Miss because he he hasn't I had a either. great record wherever he went. You know, it's always that that dark cloud. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think he found his sweet spot. You know, sometimes you just find a place that I'm, this is my place. It's kind of like yeah. Andy Reid was a really really good coach, and I think Lane Kiffin kind of falls in there. But it wasn't until he got to Kansas City when Kansas City said, "Hey." Do your thing, man. And he's been doing his thing. And plus, too, it also helps when you have the one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, Patrick Mahomes. And, and let's give it up to shout out to, to Andy Reid, another Christian, um, to find that young man and to take a chance on him. When you had a quarterback, a lot of people said that that's what the quarterback And he realized this is the dude that's going to win. You know what I'm saying? And I know we're coming up against it, but yeah. Um, yeah. I did want to throw that you, 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 do, you do keep mentioning Christian out there. Some people will have a problem with that because they can't see that a, they can't imagine a Christian like Deion Sanders, who, you know, wear, wears sunglasses and shades and rhymes and stuff like that. Like, well, you haven't you haven't seen you haven't seen the pulpit sometimes. Yeah, some of our preachers. <laughs> that, that, but, but anyway, that's another story. Yes. So, so one thing that Deion did, um, he I uh, forgot what bank it was. I don't know which bank it was. I don't want to shout out the wrong one because they need a they deserve a shout out. Yeah. He, he partnered with a bank to open trust funds for all of the fathers on his team. Guys who who uh who have are, you know babies either on the way or have had a baby. And it isn't a bunch of them. I think it's like five or six of them. Mm -hmm. Um but they he, they deposited 2000 of course cuz the number 21 Deion Sanders 2100 and some odd dollars to start life of uh, start start as babies to build their trust fund so that they can go to college one day. Wow. I mean, dude. but he's a bad person, but he's terrible. And I know, and we don't have time to talk about it. I know what happened with him and Sean Keeler from the Denver post and everything, you know, they banned Sean Keeler from answering, asking questions anymore at press conferences. But if you read some of the stuff, I, and I've read everything that Sean Keeler has written about mm -hmm. Dion. Mm -hmm. um, it is, incendiary not just disrespectful it's evil mm -hmm. um i think that when you talk about somebody like the way he talks about him um and calls him names using the pen using the keyboard mm -hmm. or whatever and would never say it to dion's face even though he's in press conferences i think mm -hmm. it's evil mm -hmm. um i do wish that the university had handled it differently i, th I wish they hadn't banned healer from asking questions because he's still going to show up to the press conferences yeah. and He's he's now become a martyr for haters and bigots and racists and stuff because they've mm -hmm. come out of the rude work to support him, and the guy is a hack. I mean, he just he's there's two ways you can make your name in journalism. 
you can either break a really good story mm -hmm. or you can become controversial. Mm -hmm. And he chose to be controversial and go to war with Dion because he's the hottest thing in the state of Colorado. And now what they've done is they've made him a name. Mm -hmm. Like nobody cared about Sean Keeler before now. Now he's the guy that took on Deion Sanders mm -hmm. and who won't answer questions anymore. Deion you know, never cussed him out, never called him out of his name, never said he was a bad writer or anything. He just said, I'm tired of you disrespecting me and I don't have to answer a question. And he doesn't. He doesn't. That's not part of the deal. He doesn't have to be mm -hmm. disrespected like that to his, you know, to, to, to his face. However, that being said, you now just put him on the same level with you because now people know his name. Right. right. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and that's what he wanted. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, that's, that's what he wanted. That's what he wanted. And, and um, let's hope that that works out. Let's just hope that he, you know, some Christian values come out of this um, situation there. But, you know, it, it, they do it all the time at work. They call it slander. You know, you keep on, you know, um, attacking your boss. You get fired. Right. Um, you know, there's got to be, and, and we're living in an age now where respect is just not given just because people don't want to give it. You know, you don't, re I mean, you know, I'm a Tom Brady fan. You got to respect it. The dude won so many places and won some, one of the most all time winning is super. And you have people hating on him just because he's a winner. You know, I mean, I'm not a Michael Jordan fan cause I'm a Piston fan. However, you got to admire that the dude can play. Hey. All right, I'm 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 gonna I'm I'm gonna offer this as an explanation. Mm -hmm. I believe we see an increase in that because of the ability to say what you want to say on the internet mm. electronically. We have a lot of keyboard tough guys. You and I that came up the way we came up is if you want to say something to my face, you also could suffer the consequence of my reaction to that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That 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 created a that created some sort of level of mutual respect, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like you know we're gonna handle business. You're gonna disrespect me to my face. Well, th that's gone. That's out the window. I can get on Twitter and mm -hmm. I can make mean tweets and mm -hmm. I can say stuff about folks, you know, in a camera on a podcast when I'm nobody else, nobody around. And you know, Dion ain't even really a tough guy. Like when I say that, I don't mean he's not a bully or anything like that. What it, what what? But what he is is a man. Yes. Right. And so it isn't just him. It's people talking about Tom Brady. It's people that are talking mm -hmm. about anybody, right, mm -hmm. for, for that matter. There will be some people who will watch this video and who will put in the comments some nasty stuff about you and me. Yes. Guaranteed. Oh, they would already, never, already ever, have ever, it. Ever already have haters. It. Never, ever, ever say it to my face. They never would. I mm -hmm. guarantee it. Guarantee it. You know mm -hmm. why? Because we've brought up a generation of keyboard warriors and that's just is is what it is and so it comes with the territory so it's incumbent upon those of us who are in front of the camera and i guess this is just a little thing to talk to dion like he's maybe the greatest athlete of all time been an analyst for 20 years on nfl network i mean he's been in the spotlight since he's been in high school mm -hmm. i just want to remind you brother it's all good you still you still Look, to, when you get off the camera, you're still Dion. So you don't have to you don't have to you, you don't have to go to war with the haters because you know you still have your life. Like at the end of the day, you're going you you're going to your mansion. Two of your sons are gonna play in the NFL. You know, I mean you're a grandfather now, man, and you're still pretty. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, and you know what? You represent well. We rooting for you. We're praying for you, Dion. And like I said, that I'm still putting a shout out to Chris Carter. I hope he gets an opportunity at some point. Um, because you know, like I said, you know, I applaud that we have women in the NFL. Why isn't Chris Carter getting a shot? He's coach too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, somebody give this man a shot. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're trying everybody else out. Why not? I mean, he's he's won pretty much everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Even though he's an Ohio state dude, you know, we, we ignore that part, but so someone ought to give this man a shot. So I'm going to keep on putting it out there until he doesn't want to do it or anything comes out there and says it. But, um, you know, as we get ready to close here, you know, um, the thing that I'm most disturbed about is opportunities when it's clearly there, people are not looking at the opportunities of what's in front of them. They're looking what's in their imagination. And that's the part that really disturbs me now more than anything else is people dream up stuff without any facts. You know, if you look at the facts, if you look where it does, or if you have done it, you know how hard it is. And most of the people taking the shots at people like Dion and stuff, they never played. 
or if they play, they never played at that level. They don't know what it takes to make it there. And I think that's frustrating for a lot of those guys, for people taking pot shots who never played against a pro player before, never played against a set. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, we fortunately for us, we played against pro players. <laughs> you know, really quick where you stand. As to just to be on the just to be on the bench warm where nobody knows your name. You just have a number. Like, who's that dude? They're yeah. really, really, really awesome guys out there. And and and, to, and and I think that's the nuance of it. To make it at that level is so hard. And to, yeah, yeah. And again, there's going to be no point of reference. I mean, this is not going to get any better uh, because people just don't have a point of reference. And one of the reasons why I have a hard time calling anybody trash in any league is because I have friends that played who mm-hmm. are now. This is how old I am. Who've played and retired, right? Yeah. Yeah, from NFL, Major League Baseball, and, mm-hmm. and and I'll say this, and I'm done. To give you a point of reference. Now, you and I, we've played against NBA players before, right? Mm-hmm. i got friends who are ex-NBA players. Yeah. But I remember playing in a pro-am in Dallas at Redbird League. Larry Johnson dunked on me so hard, it made me stop liking sports. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was like playing against Thanos. It was like yes. playing against one of the X-Men. Yes. Like, it was, it was these supervisors. Like, first of all, he's as large as a refrigerator, and, yeah. he can, and, and he's got like a 40-inch vertical. Like, like I... A regular person has no chance to even be on the court with some of these guys, let alone to. So when they have a, so when they're not necessarily winning every single one of their games, mm-hmm. setting records with every play, all oh, their trash or whatever. Like, bro, until you've been out there with them and you can't, you can't catch them, you can't stop them, you can't block them, you can't do anything. You will never know. They just manhandle you. I, you know, it's so embarrassing. You, you know, they manhandle you, and it almost takes your manhood. Like, man. You know, I, I I'm not afraid of nobody, but you know, when you I, go against was, something that you know you can't compete, can't you shouldn't even be there. That, when, Larry, like the, when, when Larry when Larry Johnson dunked on me, I promise you, I became a spectator immediately. <laughs> I was like, hey, take me out, take me out. But my, my, you know, everybody thinks they can play in the until you play against an NBA dude, then you realize real quick, like, oh snap, this is. Now I see why I'm just not, yeah. Now I see why and, they didn't and, get me. and so and so to round this off, you and I have coached for many years yeah. youth sports of all kinds, yeah. right? We know how hard it is to win in team sports. So when we talk when when we talk about Dion and criticize him and going in year two, in year yeah. two, this guy has a chance to make a bowl. Really had a chance to make a bowl last year. Yes, and I will say that the reason they didn't was because Dion was still learning. He mismanaged mm-hmm. the clock against Arizona. So they lost on a field goal. Whatever happened at halftime when they blew a 29 to zero lead against Stanford, whatever happened, mm-hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. Right. And hopefully they learned from all mm-hmm. those things because they were that right there. They're a six and six team. Yeah. They didn't have to upset anybody. They right. came back too late on USC. That could have been one of the greatest upsets of all time. Mm-hmm. Right. They lost by three against, against a real good coach, by the way, a real good yeah. coach. Well, Link, I guess Lincoln Riley's turning out to be a coach now after they beat LSU. Uh, well, well, but, I mean, I'm going to give Lincoln Riley his due. He was a real good coach beforehand. I, I think he with, was. He I, was. I, I think with Lincoln Riley, though, the fact of it is, is everybody was shocked. Like, wow, here's an experienced coach in the NFL, in the in the, in the college ranks, okay? And a lot of hype games, and you almost lost to, to Deion Sanders, Coach Sanders. and With a with, with Heisman winner. Yes. Caleb Williams. With a Heisman. He had already he had won the year before. Yeah. And let's right. just so, let's just say he's also the Bears' number one pick. Shout out, my Bears. Yeah, yeah. Good luck with that one. We're going to the, we're going to the playoffs this year, man. Yeah, they, the they're, they're still going to mess them up. But anyway, <laughs> how dare you? You all the new lions right now. In, in Coach Eberflus, we trust. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, but be, but before but before we close here, I I think that um. What's the last thought that you think about Coach Sanders? I don't know if he's got a ceiling or not, but if he reaches his ceiling for what he generates financially, Mm -hmm. for what he does for his community, for what he does for those players, there's a whole bunch of players out of the 134 FBS Division I schools that don't do what he does, right? Mm -hmm. Like he said, he has said, now all I got to do is just go get wins, right? Mm -hmm. So – I hope he gets. I hope he gets wins. I hope that they go at least six and six and go to a bowl. At that point, I do think that he will be the hottest commodity coaching wise in in, in college 
And I don't know if I see him at Colorado after his boys and Travis Hunter graduate. Mm -hmm. Um, I just don't, I just think the stage is just going to get bigger. If he doesn't, if he doesn't make it to a bowl this year, Mm -hmm. I do think that in year two, they're not going to call for his head. He's raised too much money for that school. But I don't know. And he's won way more weighty games than the school ever thought of. I don't know if he will want to stay because he's so used to excelling at everything that he does. So uh, this is, I do think this is the only year too, but I do think it's a make or break year for him internally. Mm-hmm. I think it's a make or break deal for him for his opportunities going forward. And I do think it's a make or break year as to whether or not Colorado has a future in the CFP and not this year, but mm-hmm. I mean, in years to come. Yeah, I do. And so I do, it's going to be fun to watch. Well, well, I'm going. Oh, with, and we got to say this before we go. Yeah. I know we said it earlier. Our, our nephew, BJ green, number 35 edge rusher, Bo be a monster Taz. That's t- called a Tasmanian devil. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen this kid. He used to go to my church here in Hill uh, in Nashville, and his parents are good friends of ours. Uh, mm-hmm. Used to sing with his wife and played flag football with his dad. Yeah, um, I was his dad. Thing bad right about too. his dad, he's a Cowboys fan. But people, you know, you, you know what? I did not know this until like three years ago. His mm-hmm. godfather is Greg Ellis. Really, defensive line from the Dallas Cowboys. Well, the I kid can't that. do nothing but succeed. He can't do so. Just go out there and do your thing, BJ. Don't worry about the haters. Go get drafted in the NFL. Get your degree in engineering and be an honor student like you are. Well, you know what? And, and folks, I just want to end with this thing. The, the, you know, what I like what Coach Sanders is doing, he's more than a coach. He's showing integrity, bringing integrity back into the NCAA. They may not like him, but he's doing things that are just phenomenal. The fact of it is getting a trust fund for guys – being a leader, talking to the guys, being real with them, right? Respecting women. Um, these are values that are lost because you're making so much money now, you know? And I like the fact that, yes, he's modern, but yet he's still old school. And 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 that's the thing that I really like about And you got great coaches out there that do the same thing. They want to make sure the integrity yeah. is really taken care of. We're not, we, I'm just saying for coaches, keep doing it. And keep making a difference. You know, there's nothing worse than you just worrying about winning and you're forgetting those guys when they leave your school. You don't help them get jobs. You'll help them get their careers. You just say, I'm using them. And we've seen a lot of coaches out there that unfortunately use their players so that they can get a paycheck and forget about them. And we've seen that. We're not saying any of who they are, <laughs> but we've seen it personally. And for those guys, I hope that you get it at some point and realize these are kids that need a figure. Be that person, be that man that they need in their life and guide them. So with that in mind, you know, I'm rooting for Coach Sanders this year. You know what I'm saying? Except when he plays Michigan. <laughs> I hope he beats Ohio State every year he runs up against them. That's all I hope so. But other than that, <laughs> I'm rooting for Coach Sanders in every game except for that. And uh, guys, keep representing, keep doing your thing. Till next time, we'll see you on Mom and Dad Talks.